Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my Shabby Craft Studio. I'm Martha, and I am here today. I'm sorry, I am constantly, like, um, trying to organize. <laughs> I can't seem to get it quite right yet, but that's because the whole stitching thing is a whole different thing than the journal making thing was. I'm here today to share my dyeing experience with you. Um, I did not film the dyeing itself. I didn't think that was necessary. You can look on YouTube. I actually bought Rit dye, not the liquid. This is a fixative. Um, and I bought this to fix the color to this per the Rit dye website on ice dyeing. And real easy to Google. Um, they have a video, really easy and fun to do. You just need ice on hand. And some of the things, other places I read and YouTube videos I saw said to use different sizes of ice. And Tony went and bought a couple of bags of ice and he just sort of gently smashed them on the cement floor in the basement. We have an unfinished part of our basement that all kinds of things have taken place in the marbling of the papers that we tried and tea dyeing and avocado dyeing and well actually I think the avocado dyeing happened outside but anyway um <laughs> yeah so pull up a cup of tea coffee water wine a big jug of ice if you're out in the uh pacific northwest because my friend Robin, hi Robin, has uh, predicted 115 temperatures today. That's Fahrenheit. That's a lot. That's very, 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 very hot. Now, I don't know if they get the humidity. We're going to be um, 90, 92 here with very high humidity. Kind of stinks. Um, looks pretty out. I'm looking out my windows. Looks great outside. Doesn't feel so great. So, it was 72 at uh, 5.30 this morning. Yeah. So anyway, enough babbling, Martha. Get on with it. Um, I've dimmed the light a little bit, so it's not quite so bright. And I think I'm going to have to I have to move my tea over in order to show you. And I can't fit everything on screen all at once. This is a very, very, very extremely large t-shirt. It's a 2XL men's t-shirt from Walmart. It's a George brand. And it's the t-shirt that I had taken, uh, I had cut a part off of the back bottom and I had used it to make my little t-shirt bits that I dyed with, um, that doesn't belong in there. I had dyed with um, um, my distress inks yes my different colors of distress inks so you know that's that's distress ink and this is writ dye so i don't really see much difference i did wash the t-shirts first washed and dried them uh which it does advise you on most applications that anytime you're going to dye you should wash with soap and water doesn't matter if it's in a washer um, when you dry it, you should not use fabric softeners or in your wash. You should not use fabric softeners uh, or fabric softener sheets in the dryer because that leaves a coating on the fabric. But, you know, honestly, um, just washing it because when you first buy things, whether it's clothing or fabric like this, this looks nice and crisp. And the reason it looks that way, and it looks like all lined up and stuff, but if you were to tear this, it would tear off kilter. Now, um, when you buy this, they put chemicals on it to make it look crisp and pretty in the stores. I always wash my fabrics, unless it's a little tiny piece of fabric, um, like the long strips, or I even wash fat quarters when I buy them, because I don't want the chemicals on me, first off. I don't want to smell them. Even if you can't smell them, you're not as sensitive as I am. I always wash everything. I wash my clothes before I even put them on. I try them on, but then I wash them and dry them because, um, yeah, 
it, it's just not safe to wear clothes straight out of the store. I see people on YouTube do it like van lifers and stuff. It just makes me crazy. Anyway, <laughs> yes, I'm anal. I have OCD issues. Yes, I do. Uh, you heard it here first. So this is a beautiful t-shirt. I used yellow. I used denim blue. I think I might have used purple on it. There's bits of purple on it. But of course the blue and the yellow made green. And I knew it would in places. I wanted it to. I love this speckled bit here. Um, I don't know where these reds came from because I did not use red on it. So I either had red on my hands, the red dye was open, I don't know. But I thought I used the blue and yellow and purple. Now, this might be from the purple. Maybe the purple broke. And if you don't know, all dyes are made up of various colors. Um, and a lot of dyes will break. When I used to dye wool, getting the, the dye to break was fun. So that might be the purple. I don't know. Anyway, um, there's a sneak peek of the other things. So there's that. I really love it. I really love it. Maybe that's orange. I don't, I don't know. My dyes are downstairs. I should have brought them up. But I love like the yellows on the sleeve. I love this part here. I love it all. It came out a lot darker than I thought it would, but I don't know why. Well, I do know why. That's a, that's a fib. Um, I do know why. I used way too much dye. I had a ton of ice cubes on there and I sprinkled on the dye, which is all you do. You just sprinkle, I just cut a corner off the packet and just sprinkled it. And you sprinkle it over the ice cubes. So I had a big tray. I got two years ago, I think it was, I got two large roasting pans you can't see my hands. They're way out here. I got two large roasting pans from Ikea. And they came with a rack in them. And you can turn the rack one way and it sits just about on the bottom. There's no like feet on the bottom of the rack. You turn the rack up and the liquid sinks to the bottom. And that's what you want because I used a lot of ice on the first batch. And there was probably an inch and a half to two inches of liquid in the bottom because I used a lot of ice and that melts. And that the dye sits on the ice and as it melts, it bleeds into the fabric. Great technique, love it. Um, however, this did come out a lot darker than I expected it to. But it has a lot of fun pieces in it and I will be tearing this off and using it to stitch. I might tear little pieces, I might tear a big piece and use it as a background. I might um, try making yo-yos out of it. I don't know how that'll work because this is a stretchy fabric, not cotton. Haven't tried it before. Something new to try. Um, or Suffolk puffs or uh, yo-yos or Suffolk puffs. Or um, I might even try the, um, what are the little octagonal things? Oh, why can I never remember the name of anything anymore? Hold on, I'm getting them. These things. No, not those things. Where'd it go? Whee! Come over here. I'm struggling. I'm trying to find what I want. These things. What are these things called? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> these. <laughs> those things. And I make them by folding and attaching them all in the middle. Because... I just like them that way. And you can really use either way. You could use this way or you could use that way. So, uh, whatever they're called, because the name is still not coming to me. Too much Benadryl, I think. Anywho's. All right. So onward and upward. I did a huge piece of cheesecloth. And of course, this is the purple. Oh, so I started to say, if your rack touches the bottom, any dye that mixes, which, you know, all the dyes will mix once the ice melts. Um, all you'll get is mud in the pan. And um, when you do that, that's what'll soak into your fabric and you don't want that. You want the colors to soak in. So I don't know, can you see the, the teal? I have like an aqua dye and, oh, there it is, here. Let me pull this over here. Can you see it better? Zoom in? Sure, I can zoom in. This beautiful blue here, 
it's like an aqua I think it's aqua <gasps> there it is I love blue this color blue and purple together unfortunately I did not get enough of the blue in here and it's in various places I got some there you know little round edges and another tip was that um spread your fabric out don't try and do too many pieces at once which i did i tried to put like all these in two trays all these that i'm getting ready to show you and i did like i did purple and then i did blue and then i did whatever well this is what i got and to be honest i'm not unhappy with all this purple but it's a lot of purple I don't know when I'm going to use all this up. <laughs> so that's cheesecloth. All right. And then I can put these back down. Because you'll be able to see the rest of these. And then this is another piece of fabric that I got. And it does soak through to the back of the fabrics. Now, some of these, I kind of scrunched them up like this. Oops, not cooperating. I kind of scrunched them like this and I laid them on the rack and then you just you know you just do that to all your pieces and you pour the ice all over it spread it out and then you just tap the powder on top however this whole batch here is where I used way too that I was too heavy-handed with the dye and they tell you right on the website you don't need as much as you think you need because <laughs> it looks very sparse on top of the ice and so I was really heavy handed and this is what I got. So I'm going to be doing some purple stuff in, <laughs> in the near future. This one turned out gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And I, I don't know if I can get you out. Let me try and raise you up a little. It's just, it's hard to show you the whole thing. Okay. So isn't that amazing? Look at this. So that was obviously because I had it folded a certain way. Don't know what way that was, couldn't tell you. But I love the colors. I've got greens, and I've got the aqua blues, and yellows, and of course purple. Because purple, you know. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Don't know what I'm going to do with that. This is a flower sack towel. Um, and that's, it looks like a really tight cheesecloth. There's a good view of it. Okay. So there's this piece. Now this, this fabric is just white cotton. It's just white cotton muslin that I washed and dried a while back and I tore it into strips because I was thinking I could make book covers. I was going to jelly print on them and I never did, which is something else I'm going to try to. Now this piece, I think I had tea dyed this piece first and I just stuck it in to see what would happen. Love it. Love this over here. I think that's why the colors are a tad bit more muted, but I like it. Do you like it? I love it. So we had to let this, because we used so much ice and we didn't do it till the afternoon, um, we had to let the ice melt overnight. And it, um, I also threw some thread in there. So this is crochet cotton. And I just, I had Tony hold his hands out <laughs> about that far. And we, um, wound it around his hands. I do have a, a skein, skein, skein winder. Ooh. Well, okay. That's not supposed to be tied together in the middle like that, but this is how it came out. Now, I am going to do more thread, but the reason this came out the way it did <clears throat> is because um, of how I had it sitting with the other fabrics. And because I was heavy handed with the dyes. So I'm gonna bring you bring you back down a little bit. Sorry. So you're kinda 
There you go. All right. So it came out pretty. I did not obviously get enough blue on there. But it came out pretty. It's easier to see when I put it down, I think. And then this was just some white string because I've actually taken white string and dyed it with um, Distress Inks and I can pull it apart into strands and use it like embroidery thread. So it's just, see, it's almost like six strand embroidery thread size. So you can use one or three or whatever you want. And that came out pretty too. Again, a lot of purple. <laughs> Went a little hog wild on the purple. Yep, I did. So, and that string is, I don't know if I used, to be honest, I don't know if I used this. I think I used that. Nope. This is even, this breaks down even thinner. And see, this is fun to use. This is just a ball of string, cotton string that you can buy in the store. Um, it's like trussing string for a turkey. And you use that and dye it, and you can pull that apart in strands as well. You probably just want more than one strand because it's very fine. Um, this is a yarn that I got at... Um, Tuesday morning, like two years ago. And I think that's what I dyed. Anyway, I don't remember. Because, you know, that was two days ago. <laughs> and I can't remember the name of those stupid, yeah, things. So, now, the second batch we did yesterday. I need a drink. I'm talking too much. Mm. Excuse me. The second batch we did yesterday came out much better because... I knew to be lighter handed with it. So this is the second batch I did. And so you do get some shrinkage. I mean, um, when you use fabric and you dye it and stuff, somehow it does shrink, you know, cause you have to rinse it and wash it and dry it. So what I did was, okay, so I had the trays, I had the racks. And what I found was the racks that came with the Ikea trays were too wide. And so I have some cheap one um, from Dollar Store, Dollar Tree. I have some cheap cake racks from there. And I put those over the other racks. And it worked much better because small things can't fall through as easy. Anywho, you put the ice, you sprinkle the dye on. When all the ice is melted, you put a couple of tablespoons of the Rit Fixative in a spray bottle, fill it with water. And I sprayed the first batch. I sprayed, we stuck it in um, plastic wrap, which I have left over from my old wool dyeing days. Stuck it in plastic wrap, wrap it up, make sure it's sealed tightly. Um, stuck against, the saran wrap is stuck against itself. And then you put it in a microwave that you don't use for food. And I have an old microwave downstairs that I used to use in my wool dyeing days which is why I don't get rid of anything because I end up using it again somewhere down the road. Um, and so you wrap it up, you know, you can, you can fold up your fabric and like this, and then you wrap it in the saran wrap, make sure it's, it's all, you know, closed up on the ends and everything. Put it on a paper towel in the middle of the microwave, put it on for two minutes or three. The saran wrap will puff up, you use tongs or a pot holder, take it out of the microwave, do the next piece. And you let them cool, open up the saran wrap, and then you um, rinse them in cold water. Well, the rinsing, you're always going to get a lot of dye out, even if you use the fixative. So the second batch, what I did was, after all the ice had melted after a couple hours, because I used a lot less ice and a lot less dye. And you'll see I still have some white spots here, which is fine. I'm, I'm good with white, too. That's fine and dandy. Um... And I sprayed it. I went downstairs and I sprayed it at night. It sort of dried there over overnight, just laid out on a towel. So I dampened it the next morning, sprayed it again with the fixative, put it in the saran wrap, put it in the microwave to heat set it, took it out, rinsed it. And I think that worked better 
I don't know. I still lost color because like red dye, you'll always, and these are not ironed. I did not iron them before show and tell. So um, red dye will always run. Amazingly, the yellow ran a lot more than I thought it would. Um, but there's some really lovely dark spots on here. And when you get the wrinkles out of it, it'll these will re be really great to stitch on or use for, you know, for these and yo-yos. <laughs> oh, I can't remember the name of them. Crap. <sighs> so my allergies have been acting really, really badly. And, um... So I sound hoarse, I sound wheezy, and I am. Look at that. Now these were magenta and yellow. Those are the only two colors I used on this, magenta and yellow. The store didn't have red, so I got, I don't know if it's magenta or wine color or burgundy, something like that. It's not a true red, but I like it. I And I, I swear I sprinkled, it was like sprinkling, you know, pepper over something. If you don't like ton of pepper, you got to think, okay, I'm just putting this much pepper on it. And that's how it turned out. And it turned out way better. Now, this next batch I did, I experimented. Maybe this is the tea dyed piece. This might be the tea dyed piece. Yeah, I think it is because it's brown underneath. So this came out really nice, came out muted. Um, and I used green and pink is what I used on this, green and pink. And this is how it came out. And I think the yellow is from it, the green breaking. Um, and that came out really pretty. And what I did was I put this, I put two pieces of white under it, folded separately. So I folded them up, I think. And I, I did something similar to this. And I did that with two pieces and then put this piece on top. So this is the darker, of the three pieces, okay? When that's ironed, it's gonna be so pretty. <clears throat> and then, these are the pieces from underneath. They came out very, very, this is what I was looking for, more muted colors. And now that everything is dry, I had told Robin in a in an email yesterday, we've been emailing back and forth, that I didn't know if I would do this again, because. It's not that I want control over it, but I do want certain colors in certain places. But again, these were folded. So the colors bleed through and that's what I got. And then this one, I believe, was on the very bottom of the three pieces. So it's much more faded. Let me, let me lay this out because I know you're getting glare. I wish I had ironed these now because it would have shown up a lot better. So hopefully these are showing up on camera about the same way they're showing up in my true life vision, which is much improved since I went to the eye doctor now. So yeah, so aren't those pretty? So if you want a more muted version of what you're doing, layer it under other pieces of fabric. So this one was on top of that one. This one was on top of those two. So there. So there's my show and tell for my dyed fabrics, dyed with writ dye. I'm happy. I'm happy. Way too much purple, but I'm happy. I, I really, I think this is, I think the t-shirt is my favorite, to be honest, because <laughs> I do love blue. I love purple, and they'll be pretty mixed. Okay, so there's all that now, and that, again, that's the fixative I used, Okay. So there's the dyed stuff I'm setting aside. Maybe. Why not? Now. <clears throat> Next. I showed you this quickly in a different video, and I'm going to try and use this today, I think, if we have time. It's the Clover. It's um, the Yo-Yo, Quick Yo-Yo Maker. I haven't, I've seen it used, but I haven't, um, I haven't used it. I've seen it done on camera. It comes with quick yo-yo maker. Comes with instructions. So basically what you do is you 
Good Lord. It's just a yo-yo, people. So, like, you take a square of fabric, you pop it in between the two pieces, and you cut around it, and then you sew around it, and then you remove the plastic piece, and you have a yo-yo. So I don't know if I'll do that today. We'll see. I'm putting that aside for the moment. Um, the other thing I got was I ordered tatting needles on Amazon. So that's what they are. And I haven't opened these yet. Um, it tells you needle selection guide. Um, and it has the thread sizes on the back. So if you want to use thread or yarn, it tells you. And then it tells you like 20 or 10 pearl cotton in size five, you use the five. If you use 10 or smaller, you use a three. If you're using 180, 70, uh, 60 or 50, you use an eight. And if you use 50, 40, 30, 20 pearl cotton size 12 or eight, you can use a seven. And this is, these sizes are the 7, 5, and 3. So hopefully I bought the right package for the kind of tatting I'm doing. Uh, no idea what this is. I don't have any idea what that is. <laughs> oh, look. It's an instruction book. So it tells you how to start the tatting process and to make a ring. It gives you one pattern here to make a, a ring. And then you can make a basket of flowers. Hmm. Well, I still don't know what this is. I, I'm going to have to figure that out. If any of you know what this is, came with the tatting noodles, let me know. And then this is a really nice tube for these tatting needles. Now what I've been using is the doll making needle. It's really sharp on the end. And I think from what I've seen in videos, this is a much more blunt end needle. And I was constantly poking myself. So this is what it looks like. Oop, too far. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So this is the finest one. And this is about, I'd say my dowel making needle is about this size. They are very flimsy though. I'm not sure I like that. Well, let's get the dowel needle, dowel making needle. I think that's what it's called. Did I say dowel knitting needle? Actually, I think that's more the middle size. So that's my dowel making needle I got from, from Hobby Lobby. But if you look, <laughs> if you look, I, I don't know if you can see this. This one, this one right here is way sharper than this one. This is a much more duller. And I thought about just taking an emery board and because um, this came in a package of two from Hobby Lobby. I thought about taking an emery board and just like dulling. But I thought, well... You know, I do use different sizes of thread. And I thought if I want to pursue the tatting a little more, why not invest in the proper needles? And there's there are the eyes of the needles. So there's that. And I still have to figure out what that's for. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oops. Wrong end. No wonder it can go in. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a needle threader. Can you see that? Needle threader. That's what those are. I guess depending on what size. Yeah, that's a smaller one. Okay. Well, figured that out, Martha. <laughs> People are probably furiously typing, it's a needle threader, you dummy. Okay, so there's that. So now I have to figure out ways to keep these things together um, and try them out. So where are we? We're at 30 minutes. 
Okay. I'm going to stop the camera for a moment, gather myself together. I'll be right back. Alrighty. So, um, I was going to play with the yo-yo maker, but I'm going to need to practice with that first. <laughs> um, directions, reading the directions, processing the directions, then trying it on camera just is going to be too stressful for me. So I am almost finished with the pink wall hanging. And so that was the first, this is the first block at the top. And then there's this one. I'm going to bring a light a little bit closer. Yeah. And I embroidered, this fabric has this design on it. I think you can see a little of it right there. And so I just embroidered that. These are the ribbon roses and then colonial knots. Top two rows are ribbon roses, colonial knots. These are the knot, they are the imperfect <laughs> um, tatting that I did. And I'm okay with including them. This beautiful fabric comes this color. No, I did not tea dye it, but trust me, it looks like I did. So I used French knots on colonial knots on that. And then I have ribbon here. I do have um, the little edges that I might leave sticking out when I sew the back on. I haven't decided yet. And then I did long bullion knots with beads at the top. So I like that. And then I had all these different pink beads. So I just put those on in various clusters. And then I wanted to use this fabric, but I didn't really feel like it fit in perfectly. So what I did was this used to be white and I dyed it with avocado uh, a while back. And this little felt flower, my friend Robin sent me. And this is a dorset button. <laughs> and I remember the name of those shapes. Those shapes are hexagons. They're called hexes. Um, so I put my little dorset button on the flower and then put the flower on the ribbon, which um, this ruffled ribbon is also something that Robin turned me on to. She had sent me some and that's, that's, I went and got white and avocado dyed it. Um, then these flowers, I didn't want to do a lot of stitching on them, but I did the leaves behind them and I did the centers in this yellowish green that is the color that was on the fabric. And then this is just another bunch of knots. And then this is a tatting that went wrong. <laughs> and this is one of my crocheted flowers that now looks square in the middle. I don't know why, but that's, you know, it's not, it's round. And then I did drizzle stitches in the center of this tatted flower. So I thought those were fun. Um, and then this is what I worked on yesterday and the day before when my head was killing me and I was sneezing a million times. Um, can you see how intricate I got? And I used three or four different colors of thread on that. So I'm going to finish that today. And then I'm, this is, if you look at the back, this is where my pencil marks are. So I need one more thing to go there. And I haven't quite decided what that's going to be. But um, I thought that I would work on this flower and just finish out this video with me working on this. Um, I have a question for all of you. Not that many people are answering my questions in the comments, but that's okay. I appreciate those few of you who are doing that. It makes it easier on me. Um, I, I'm always interested to hear what other people have to say. So let's see, that's that one. So I want to go a little bit darker with this one. And is this enough? Might be enough. Sorry, I have various bits of thread laying around and um, I, I don't like to waste. So if I have, you know, eight or 10 inches of thread, I'm going to try and use it on another part of this. So I have this much thread. Too much to throw in my my thread bucket, which is this. Did you know this is called an ORT? O-R-T, I think it is. 
when you save all your threads and bits? Yeah, there's actually a purpose behind it. But anyway, all right, focus the eyes. And so I'm going to do, not all of this is dark, but I'm going to do it in dark because it's a very tiny space to work on. So my question for you is, if you had the ability, say a class was taking place in your area where you already live, so you didn't have to pay to travel there. I mean, because traveling, that's a whole other thing, right? Whether you fly or drive or whatever. Um, and I don't like to fly. I've never liked flying on airplanes. Um, I did my share of it when we lived in Germany. Um, and we had to travel back and forth to Germany because Tony was in the army. Uh, we had two different tours over there. And so I did my share of flying then. That was more than enough for me. <laughs> I've always hated airplanes. So... If a class was being given in your area, and say it was a five-day class, because I think that's that's my comparison at this point in time, is five-day classes, and you wanted to take the class. Now, lodging is available, but it's not included in the price, so you have to pay extra for it. The advantage to lodging is that you get to spend like the extra time maybe in the evenings if somebody's there, you know, practicing what they've learned or whatever. Five day class and the class cost you $1,500 for five days. Doesn't include meals. Meals are extra. Lodging is extra. Travel is extra. Would you take that class? I mean, is that something you you would say money was no object? Is that something you would do? I don't know. I know I know these people are experienced. But I just I don't know. Fifteen hundred dollars is a lot for five days for me. But maybe that's because money is an object for me. Money's always been an object for me. I've always been ultra aware and pretty frugal. I mean, yeah, I spend money on craft supplies, but I don't spend, I don't know. I, I guess I probably spend more than I should, but I don't spend as much as some people I've seen, trust me. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't have an endless uh, pocketbook, let's say. And because of my husband being in the Army, not an officer, he was an enlisted man, um, I just always learned to be pretty frugal. I think the most money, the, most, the time I spent the most on stuff, I was also working and my daughter was in dance competitions because I just wanted to give my daughter what would make her happy. And I did spend a lot of money on dance competitions and costumes, although I put a lot of work into the costumes myself. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know. That seems like a lot to me. Like there was a dying, there was a one day I believe it was one or two days up in Searsport Shores Campground, um, Main Fiber Arts, I think it's called. And they had someone come in and show how to indigo dye, and you got a garment out of it in the end. Now, I think that was $1,100, again, not including meals or, and it was two days. And I'm pretty sure it was $1,100. I really, really wanted to take that class. But I just couldn't. Even camping up there during the summer, during the, the high peak season, 
which it is now, is like $90. Gorgeous views. You're right on the ocean, literally. But it's $90 a night. I don't even think that's for the oceanfront views. So, and it's pretty rustic, actually. Um, you do have electricity. Um, I think there was water there. Like potable water. Potable, potable. But, which just means drinking water, of course. But $1,100 for a two-day dining class. I, I just, I couldn't. I couldn't even bring myself to ask whether, you know, we could swing it or not. It just, it just is not. I just have other priorities. I don't know. I guess, I guess I just can't bring myself to do it. And there's a, there's a, a stitching class that Sue Spargo is going to do. It's on an island, I think, out towards Washington. I think she spends her summers out that way. I'm not sure. I'm not. You'd have to go to suespargo.com. And it's through an art uh, school or something. And it's five days. And I think it's $1,500. And that does not include lodging, meals, any of that. And I would love to take like this. I think it's a mastery stitching class or something. And it's in the fall. But, uh, again, I don't know. And then I kick myself because I'm pretty sure that there are times that if I were to take classes and really invest in learning other than on YouTube <laughs> and through Google, <laughs> which is how I've learned most of the things I do, I think, um, it's already knotted. I think I might stick with things longer. Um, I never took it. I took one official weaving class and it was a Sayori weaving. And I pretty much already knew how to do everything she taught me. And it was a one, one day, two day class, I think. I can't remember now. And it was fairly local. We could drive to it in an hour and I got a friend to go with me. So that wasn't bad. Um, but, you know, it's just like really, I don't know. I would love to take a master stitching class. I mean, even I am dying to do an improvisational stitch. And that's the other thing I need to talk to you about. But Ariane Zercher sometimes on camera works on it she talks about she has one video that talks about improvisational stitching but she's doing a class that's coming up i think she's got two more classes she's going to do i think it's see i'm talking out of the side of my brain that doesn't really know the answers i think it's five days and i think it's two to three hours a day let me look it up and Again, it's expensive. For me, it's expensive. Okay, let me look. R-I-A-N-Zercher.com. Okay. And then, okay. So you go to her uh, website. You go to workshops. And she's doing improvisational stitching. It's $500, which isn't bad. It's September 25th. Hmm. Okay, so it's, here, let's go to that one. It is September 25th through October 23rd, but it's from 1 to 4.30, and it's once a week, I believe. It's uh, five days virtual workshop via Zoom that meets every Saturday for five consecutive Saturdays. First off, Saturdays are really hard. However, I really want to do the stitching. I know I would learn a lot, but it's $500. I need to sell something that's $500 in order to feel like I can, you know, 
invest that in this in this class. And plus, we're supposed to be traveling in September. And I don't know if she's ever going to do this class again. <sighs> we're supposed to travel up north to New England. Through New England and New York, so Tony can spend some time with a couple of old high school buddies that I used to hang with. Um, I grew up in Rochester as well, but um, I don't... I don't have anybody friend-wise there anymore. Um, I grew up with a really good friend, but she didn't keep in touch with me when we left. So, not as good a friend as I thought she was, I guess, huh? Shoot. So, um, I don't really have anybody there anymore, but my parents and Tony's all of Tony's family are all buried in, well, not all of them, most of them, the majority of them are all buried in the cemetery there. So um, we go and do, you know, maintenance on the grave sites. <laughs> so there's that. But um, and we go to the lake, but we can't walk on the beach because dogs aren't allowed. And we don't leave Evan. Oh, shoot. Hey, when that happens, I forget to hold my threads. Then I mess up my knot. Let's cut it out, Martha. Start again. Um, I make this mistake a lot with these knots. Yeah, we can't walk on the beach because dogs aren't allowed on the beach. So we go have a custard. Abbott's custard in Rochester. Struggle is real. And, uh, but this year, Tony has been in touch through my Facebook page, no less, with a couple of buddies that he used to hang out with in high school. There, that's better. All that for one little, <laughs> one little single French knot in the middle. And it adds dimension. And, um, and then we'll come home sometime in October. So I wouldn't be able to do the class on the road because I can't bring everything with me because our RV is too small. <clears throat> it's a van. It's a ProMaster van. That's all it is. All right. I think I've done all the flowers I want to do. I'm not doing the blue flowers because I don't want them to stand out. That's going in the jar. But I think I'm going to use some green on here. I'll pink up there. Put that up there. Oh, gotta get to my green box, which is on the bottom. Oh, or do I want to use? I could use this green. I might use that green because there's a lot of yellow in that too. And you know, it's variegated. <laughs> What's Martha's favorite threads? Variegated. Any variegated. I don't care what color it is. Bring it on. Which is the other thing that I want to do. Dharma Trading Company sells cones of six-strand embroidery floss. <laughs> you wind that off and you want to dye it. I could come up with some pretty colors. Oh, I don't want six strands, Martha. You're too busy talking. One, two, three. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe I'm just cheap as far as the classes are concerned. I know, I mean, Ariane's class for $500, you're getting five days and you're getting, what, four hours each? And she does do, um, she does link you to a private, and when she's done with the Zoom video, she has a private link to it on Facebook, and you can use it anytime you want. Now, that being said, the Zoom videos are not great quality. Um, while you're Zooming live, it's fine. Sometimes there's a little jerking and delay when she tells it to record. So when you watch it back, it's not the best quality. However, 
That being said, that's a lot of hours of instructional video. And, you know, that would definitely be, I think, worth it. But we're not supposed to be here in September. Now, I will kick myself if our trip is canceled for some reason. We don't go and I don't sign up for the class and it sells out. I would definitely be upset about that. However, I did take the Dorset button classes with her and it was, was fun. So, flip it upside down. So let me know what you think about classes. Do you find them worthwhile? I mean, a mastery stitch class, but you have to be there in person. And, um, yeah. I'm not driving cross country and I'm not flying. And I'm not driving cross country and then leaving Tony to stay with Evan every single day. Tony and I don't have the kind of relationship where I go away for a week and leave him home because when he was in the military, he had to go away. We never had any really long-term separations, but he had to go away um, several times on training, uh, to do training, give training, and... I didn't like being left behind with all of the responsibilities and I didn't get a vacation. <laughs> I never got a break. I brought up the kids. I took care of the yard. I did everything because he was gone a lot. He was a drill instructor for three years. That's not easy. Um, so, I mean, I thank God every day that I didn't have to be separated and he didn't have to go to war. Um, I thank God every day that I, you know, nothing bad ever happened to him. Well, other than the fact that some guy ran into him and caught his leg between the tailgate of one truck and the side of a trailer that he was pulling. It was not, that was not pretty. He's got a permanent, uh, permanent issue with that, um, but yeah, it's not easy being separated. And I just, I went, I did it once. When my mother was not doing great, um, she was in Maine. We were in Germany. And I told Tony, I said, I need to go home and see my mom. I need to see her before things get worse. And I was glad I did it because um, that was about... I think it was two years before we came back permanently from Germany. And when we did come back, we came back in February and she passed away in August and she had dementia. And when we came back, she didn't know who me, Tony, or our kids were. So that was a tough one. And I was grateful that I had the strength to tell Tony I was getting on a plane, <laughs> leaving he and the kids in Germany for... I think I went for about 10 days. And my brother helped me out. He was living in Maine at the time. He helped me out. And I got to visit with my mom a lot. And eat a lot of seafood. Which is my favorite way to spend time in Maine. And it was a good visit. And I was grateful that I got to do it. Um, and, but basically, I mean, I'm not, it's not like Tony would tell me, no, you can't go. It's me. It's that darn Catholic guilt I was brought up with. I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore, but, you know, once you've experienced being the one left behind, it's kind of hard not to, I'm a very empathetic person, which is part of my problem. Sometimes I'm way too empathetic. <laughs> a 
I'm like, oh, well, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Why would I do it to anybody else? <sighs> Martha, I'm such a dork. So anyway, I'm going to finish this up and I will show you the finished project because we're heading on to an hour here. Um, I will show you the finished project in the next video and I will also tell you I will play with this in the next video and I will talk to you about the next upcoming project which at this point I don't think it's going to be the felt square stitching thing from Sue Spargo. Now I will tell you if you're interested in that Ariane Zercher has, I feel like I'm promoting Ariane all the time. I, I mean, you know, I've just really gotten attracted to the things that she has done. Um, she does have a playlist on her channel, Ariane Zercher, and it does have to do with the Sue Spargo stitching from the book I purchased and it does have to do with um, the stitches in the felt circles. There were 91, 91 felt circles. I don't know that I want to do 91 squares or even that I want it to be that involved because that would be a lot of stitching. Now, it's very easy to combine those stitches and do two or three or four a day, which means two or three or four circles a day, but it was 91 stitches, 91 circles. So, I, I mean, Ariane already did it. Sue Spargo, I guess, did an Instagram, uh, like a hashtag, you know, stitch along kind of thing. Ariane talks about that in her video because basically I guess Sue didn't do YouTube videos and what she did was she sent Ariane the stitches that they were going to use. She was going to post on Instagram the next day and Ariane would do a video of the stitches but she didn't have, when she did it, she didn't have any idea of what Sue Spargo's Instagram post was going to consist of. So she just did them her way, and then you were supposed to follow Instagram. Well, I've gone back and looked. I can't find Sue Spargo's posts from that stitch along. So I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm always a day late and dollar short when it comes to be uh, finding things to be involved in like that, like stitch alongs. And let's face it, I have not kept up with the 52 tags from Ann Brooke. So why would I think I could keep up leading you guys on something like that? I don't think I would. I don't think I would do a good job of it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do on the project is to, um, I'm going to do my improvisational stitching, but I'm going to use stitches from the Sue Spargo book that she used in the stitch along because that's one way for me to learn new stitches. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, it's just going to be any piece of fabric that you want to use. And I think I might do, I have to check, but it's going to be somewhere around a nine by 12, maybe a little larger and whatever threads you want to use and we'll go along that way and if you want to follow along great if you don't i understand um wow the sun just went in <laughs> even though i have lights on it makes a huge difference when it disappears um and so i think that's what i'm going to do for my project it'll sort of be a combination but i'm not going to use felt squares i might use felt squares in some of it I might use, I might sew mirrors on, the little round mirrors. I got my little round mirrors from Joann's. Um, 
but I'll bet Hobby Lobby has them. And I'll bet um, Michaels has them. I would imagine. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to use mirrors. I'm going to use wooden beads. I'm basically going to follow along kind of what Ariane has done on her channel. So, I'm going to do my own thing with it, but I'm going to watch some of hers and refer back to that to help me accomplish what I want to accomplish. So, if you want to play along, now I will say that Susie Q Makes, Susie Q Makes, that's Susan Langford, uh, here on YouTube, and I'll link her, she is going to do a stitch along kind of thing. So if you want to check her out, she hasn't done the video yet. Um, she thinks she's going to do it in August. So if you want to do a stitch along like that, she will be explaining hers in the upcoming weeks of what she is going to do for her stitch along. So there's more than one person to follow. You can follow along Ariane. Um, she's always doing fun videos. You can, and she's done improvisational stitching videos. She's done just um, teaching videos, like this is how you do the stitch. And she has a whole play, play list, playlist of um, the stitches she did for Sue Spargo's stitch. I don't know, stitching. It was something with Instagram stitching or something. So there's a lot to follow if, if you want to do something like that. So I'm just going to be back here stitching now and then. So I hope you'll join me. Um, I appreciate everybody who does follow along and comments. And even those that are just watching or joining and not commenting. If you don't feel like it, I understand. It does help the algorithms, as other people say, on YouTube. And it does help, you know, if you subscribe... Uh oh well see when I when I lose the needle I just take the thread and I just tie it <laughs> just tie it in a knot I separate one of the threads and I just tie them it's fine it's not going anywhere I'm putting it back on this it's not going to be washed and dried it's all good so thanks for joining me have a great day have a great week stay cool if you're in that heat wave Thanks for pulling up a cup of tea with me. And thanks for any comments that you leave below. Let me know what you think about classes. And um, I will see you here the next time. And wishing you happy crafting. Love you all. I love you all. Bye, everybody. Take care. Happy crafting.